Well, hey, my schmoopy dupes, and welcome back to Bug Questions on Insects Appeal. Chances are, wherever in the world you live, if you've ever been out hiking in the woods or grasslands, you've probably at some point been devoured by one of the most obnoxious and awfully itchy bump-causing parasites around. I'm talking, of course, about the dreaded chigger, also known as harvest mites, berry bugs, red mites, and a whole other host of common names. You've also likely heard all kinds of myths about these little punks that you probably didn't even realize were myths. Today, on Bug Questions, we're gonna break down all of these myths and answer that ever-itchy question. What the heck is a chigger? Throughout my childhood and teenage years, I could often be found roaming the forests around my home, hunting for all sorts of critters to nerd out over. These frequent forest forays often landed me with many sleepless nights, rolling around with the incessant itchy rashes caused by chigger bites. This god-awful rash is referred to as trombiculosis, so named for the family of arachnids these little devils belong to, Trombiculidae. That's right, chiggers are actually a arachnid mites in the same class as spiders and scorpions, and they are found nearly everywhere in the world. So, I'll explain a little more about their life cycle in a bit, but first, let's explore the dreaded chigger bites themselves. Though we commonly refer to this maddening bodily infestation as bites, the chiggers are in fact not exactly technically biting you as we would generally define a bite. There are actually quite a few myths regarding how the chiggers parasitize their animal hosts, and I'm sure someone in your family has passed on at least one of these to you. So here's what the chiggers are not doing to you. They are not burrowing into and living under your skin, or laying eggs under your skin, nor are they drinking your blood. And as I mentioned a moment ago, they're not even technically biting you. What's actually taking place when you become infested with chigger mites is that the little jerks pierce your skin with their tiny stabby chelicerae which is a term used for the mouth parts of arachnids. Once they've made an incision, they inject a digestive enzyme filled saliva into the epidermis, which gives way into a funnel-shaped channel called a stylostome. As the enzymes break down more and more of your skin, the stylostome extends into deeper layers, and the chigger slurps up your resulting liquefied skin tissue like a nice skin-flavored milkshake simply by using the pressure in the long stylostome, as they have no proboscis or otherwise straw-like mouthparts like a mosquito has, for instance. This process can take up to three to five days, where the chigger will remain attached to the skin of the host with their face planted in the wound, in much the same way as a tick. Once they've fully engorged themselves on the skin slop, they flop off the host's body and drop to the ground, heading into the soil to enter their next phase of life. Now, at this point I should probably explain a little more about these mites. You see, the chiggers that everyone just so loves that drive you mad after a relaxing hike are actually only the hexapod larval form of the mites, which, as the name suggests, begin life with only three pairs of legs. These teensy monsters are actually only parasitic during this first life stage. Following this initial feeding on an animal host's skin, they will enter a dormant phase of nymphhood, sort of like pupating, but not, called a proto-nymph. During this time, the chiggers lay low and don't really do anything except focus on growth, at which point they will molt into their next nymphal form, known as a deutonymph, where they will finally grow their fourth pair of legs, as any self-respecting arachnid has. In this stage, the deutonymphs prowl around the underbrush and topsoil, attacking and eating other mite-sized arthropods and small insect eggs and even consuming plant material as well. Upon filling up in this life stage, the deutonymph enters yet another inactive transitional form called a tritonymph. Now, these double stages of inactive transitional instars are pretty unusual in arthropods, and even among the chiggers is my kin. Though they are undergoing an incomplete metamorphosis, as all arachnids do, this unique lifestyle where the protonymph and tritonymph are inactive 
can be likened to an insect undergoing two separate pupil stages, which is totally unheard of. These inactive transitional stages are likely an adaptation for persevering during harsher environmental periods, such as drier stretches of the summer. Finally, our tritonyms will molt into their adult stage, where they resume eating other tiny arthropods and their eggs, as well as plant material, with some species in the world apparently seeming to only consume plant material as adults. Now, getting back to the parasitic larval aspect of these tiny jerks, trombiculosis, or the itchy rash with hardened red welts from chigger bites, is actually a combination of several things. The itchiness is caused by the digestive enzymes the chiggers inject into your skin, as well as the physical damage caused by them stabbing you with their chelicerae. Further, the body reacts to the resulting stylostome and the enzymatic saliva as an allergen, causing swelling and reddening of the affected skin. Even worse is that the itching can be so intense, most cannot resist the urge to scratch the welts, which can easily lead to further infection and even longer-lasting dermatitis, at which point a doctor should definitely be consulted. While chiggers are much easier to knock off of your skin, they are much harder to initially detect than their tick cousins, which they do superficially resemble, except even tinier. Worse than not detecting them visually is the fact that you generally won't be able to feel the itch of the chiggers feeding on you until after they're already well into their feeding process. Some chiggers in the world, such as in Asia, can also potentially transmit some pretty nasty diseases, though in North America, chiggers are not known to transmit any diseases that ticks or similar mites may carry. So how do we avoid getting jumped by chiggers and how can we get them off of us and treat the rash properly? I'm sure you've heard a lot of myths regarding this as well and I'm not trying to hate on your granny here but a lot of these home remedies are a bit misguided by the myths I mentioned earlier and so they're kind of pointless. For instance, putting nail polish over your chigger bites really isn't going to do much good. Maybe it could help you stop scratching the bumps and maybe it would be harmful to chiggers that are still feeding on you, but usually the mite is gone by this point anyway and since nobody is living in the bite and no eggs are laid in there, there's not much point to suffocating the bite wound. Using alcohol on the skin can perhaps help disinfect the rash a bit, but again, isn't much help in actually relieving symptoms or stopping the chiggers. Same goes for bleach remedies. I just would not recommend applying bleach to your skin like that. It could probably kill any chiggers still on your skin, but bleach isn't exactly supposed to contact your skin either. In fact, there's a much easier and safer way to get the little punks off of your skin and kill them off. As soon as you come home from a chigger infested area, remove your clothes and put them straight into the washing machine with detergent and run it with hot water before promptly jumping in a hot shower or bath yourself. The hot water can shock and knock the chiggers off of you and hopefully drown them as well. While the heat can also increase the body's histamine response, providing some quick relief for that brutal itchiness. Use anti-itch and antiseptic ointments on your bites as soon as possible for the fastest relief and healing and avoid scratching as best as you can, as newly introduced bacteria can easily lead to secondary infections in your healing stylostomes. And when you go back out for your hike, remember to wear bug repellent and try to minimize skin exposure along your feet and legs, and even tucking your pant legs into your boots can help discourage them and other nuisances like ticks and fleas. It can also help to keep it moving when you're in tall grass or scrubby areas, as the longer you stand still, the more time you give the chigger larvae to climb onto you and find a nice spot to feed from. They aren't as agile as fleas, so they usually need a bit more effort to find a spot to dig in, usually going for areas where the clothing is restrictive, or tight warm areas of body folds, such as ankles, armpits, groin, waistline, and the backs of your knees. Anyway, I guess I'll flop on down to the ground here, but I do hope you learned something from this video, and hopefully feel a little more prepared for potential chigger attacks if you're the outdoorsy type. If you liked this video, check out my other arthropod related content, and help this channel grow by mush and subscribe, and consider contributing to my Patreon, and stay tuned for the cool reward perks I have in store. Thanks a whole lot for watching, stay schmoopy, and I'll see you in the next one.